Hello, welcome to the new series, The Accumulator. In this series, we're going to be reflecting on previous game weeks, looking forward to the upcoming game weeks, and also predicting the scores and predicting what's going to happen in the games in an accumulator and seeing how we do throughout the year. Hopefully, we'll improve, win some money as well. It's always nice. If you enjoy football or having a little punt, leave a follow and also leave a like on the video so you, I know I'm doing something right and I can bring more of these videos to you. Episode 1 of The Accumulator, let's get into it right now. We're also going to run a little competition, the chance to win a mystery football kit given to us by Mystery Football Kit Company. This Vale Betis shirt was in this box, I'm going to give this one away, look at the number on that, look at the map and the detail and that's the third kit, tags on and all, the, the real deal this. To be in with a chance of winning this kit, in December, we're going to give one away in December, well, January transfer window and one away at the end of the year. Two chances to win. Leave a comment on this video predicting the Newcastle versus Liverpool game. Just the scoreline, no scorers. Just write down 2 1, write down uh, 3 0 Liverpool, which is what it'll be, by the way. And you get one entry into the giveaway if you get it right. So, that, what, 15 to 20 en Well, how many is that? 15 to 18 entries you could have, technically, if you get all the scores right up until. The January transfer window, one feature game a week, and this week is the Newcastle Liverpool game. Get your comments in now. I usually start these by looking at how I did the previous week, obviously, first week, so we're getting straight into it. Also, guests on this channel. I'm thinking of getting some guests on, giving their predictions as well, a little conversation between us. It's also going to be quite uncut this as well, so just a raw reaction, just a lad talking about footy the way it should be. The first game's Chelsea Luton, and this game happens on a Friday night, so let's get it up right now. Chelsea have to win this game in terms of a bounce back. They got absolutely turned over against West Ham. They didn't look amazing, you know, contrary to what Chelsea fans were saying, against Liverpool, one all. I don't think they were blowing me out of the water at all. They have to bounce back. It's at home. Luton, we've got a very small sample size. A very small sample size generally for these teams, by the way, so the predictions may be a bit skewed with, but Luton have played one game um, and they got turned over 4-1 to a really good Brighton side. I'm just going to keep this simple with a Chelsea win. The next game is Bournemouth Tottenham half 12 kickoff, and this one could go either way. Look at the last two meetings between these teams. You ready for this? Hold on to something, people. Tottenham 2, Bournemouth 3. Bournemouth 2, Tottenham 3. Hmm, interesting. 2 3 or 3 2, if you like, in both games. I'm going to take the, the history into account here and take a both teams to score. If you were going to pick a team to win, I think I'd pick Spurs to win just, but the both teams to score here seems very good. Again, both meetings between these two last year resulted in the same, in both teams to score occurring. Liverpool versus Bournemouth was 3 1. Bournemouth versus West Ham was 1 all. Both teams to score, both teams scored in both of them games for Bournemouth. The Tottenham game, a lot of chances either side. It could have easily been a both teams to score occurring game, but it was a 2 0 Tottenham victory. And the Brentford game, Brentford really impressed me, and it was a 2 all in that game. Both teams to score looks very, very appealing to me here, and I'm going to take it as well. So there's my prediction. The next game's Arsenal-Fulham, and the price is just too short to back an Arsenal win. So I'm going to take an Arsenal two goals or more victory, and a similar kind of vein to Chelsea. Arsenal have to bounce back, and not in terms of they've been losing games. They've won both of the games. Um, by one goal margin, though, it's been pretty unconvincing from Arsenal, a shadow of the former self last year, I think Arsenal fans would agree, they've not been up to what they were, a really soft red card last night I must say for, for Tommy Asu, it wasn't, a, it wasn't convincing for me, one of them was a throw in, in which Havertz was took, taking longer than Tommy Asu was to get booked, so really weird, and the second was for a pullback, really soft but at the end of the day, they probably both were yellow cards, it's, it's one of those, a really small sample size to go on, Palace looked decent yesterday, a lot of the time, just pumping the ball in, so not much to go on in that game. The Forest game wasn't convincing for me at all. Arsenal had an XG of 0 0.6. 0.6, New Nottingham Forest, an XG of 1.1 in that game. Arsenal 15 shots, didn't convince me at all, only won by the one goal margin. Fulham looked poor against Brentford, turned over 3-0, didn't look convincing at all. But the second game, it was that against? It was against... Everton, that was it. And Everton had like an XG of three or something. Look at this. They had 20, 19 shots Everton had that game. So Fulham somehow got the win there. I think Arsenal have to win this game as a statement for the league. I think they'll come in all guns blazing at home as well. I think they'll play them off the park. I really do. Two goals or more for Arsenal for me. Into the Brentford Palace game. One of the many games where I'm thinking this could go either way. A draw, a home winner and a away win. Either's plausible. I'm going to take, and I've written down on my little pad here... A draw or under 2.5 goals. I don't like backing unders, but if I was going to, I'd have an under 2.5 goal 
in this game. And you're probably thinking why, because Brentford's last two games have been 3-0 and 2-2. Uh, but then again, Palace's last two games have been both 1-0s. If you look at the previous head-to-heads, Brentford Palace 1-1 last year. Brentford uh, Palace Brentford 1-1. The previous game 0-0. Are you see the theme here? The previous game 0-0. Hmm. The last four games have both been draws and both been under two and a half goals. So I like either a draw or an under 2.5 goal, and I'm going to take the under. Palace didn't look too threatening against Arsenal. I know it is Arsenal, and I know they finished second last year and all that, but it was at home. It's a tough place to go to. Uh, Brentford, again, it was a poor Fulham side we're seeing there. And I think Palace defensively are a lot better. There's not much to go on here. I'm not going to predict an either outcome because it could go either way. Under two and a half goals for me. It's a bit of a shaky prediction, that, but I'm going to take it. The next game is another really shaky one. It priced, at, I think, a two to one win for Wolves, which is pretty mad considering how good they were against Man United. I've written down here, Wolves unreal against Man United, but terrible against Brighton. And that really summarises it. And you can also say uh, Everton were unreal against Fulham and somehow didn't win. They had an XG of 3 in that game. 19 shots, as we'd mentioned earlier. 19 shots at home and didn't even score. An XG of 3 and lost 1-0. Terrible. Both teams got turned over by the, the European favourites in terms of, like, uh, you know, Villa and Brighton. Both teams battered. Everton lost 4-0 against Villa. Wolves lost 4-1 against Brighton. A Brighton side have lost Caicedo and McAllister and still turn them over. But Wolves look so good against Man United, I, I just can't... Sorry, I can't hear that Brighton result. I can't... Wolves looked unbelievable against United and somehow didn't win. I'm going to take a both teams to score here. As I mentioned, Everton at home aren't the worst. They can grind out results. The next year of three against Fulham at home. Both defences look pretty shaky. Everton conceded loads. Wolves conceded loads against Brighton. Uh, well, Brighton also scored three goals in nine minutes which I suppose isn't a true reflection on Wolves as a whole over the 90 minute period both teams to score I've just written Fulham I I've already said that I've already said I've said what I need to say Wolves also had 20 plus shots against Man United I think both teams to score here is going to fly in but a very shaky game to predict either way, either way. I don't mind a Fulham win I don't mind a Fulham win at 2-1 to one. we said a bit overpriced that what we're saying let me know both teams to score for me. The next game, going to keep this short, Man United Forest. If you want to go alternate, and I can see this happening, both teams to score. Forest, both games finishing 2 1, looking really good against Arsenal, an XG of 1.2. Man United looking poor, letting goals, chances in that Tottenham game, and chances in the Wolves game, considering 23 shots to Wolves at home is terrible. But I think United just have to bounce back here. United have to win this game. Even a Man United win, both teams to score alike. But I'm going to take a United win. I think at about 1.3 or 1.4, so there we go. The finale of the Saturday is the half-five kickoff between Brighton and West Ham. Another game I think could go either way. I'm just going to take both teams to score. Again, another both teams to score. Wolves, Brighton 4-1. Brighton, Luton 4-1. Uh, West Ham, Chelsea 3-1. Bournemouth, West Ham 1-1. Both teams to score in all four fixtures. If you look at the previous games between the two, you probably shouldn't take much notice of the last season. Brighton was 4-0, and then Brighton beat him 2-0. That was when West Ham were terrible, and Brighton were unbelievable. Brighton losing some key players, and West Ham looked a really good side against Chelsea. The previous two fixtures before that were 3-1 and 1-1. So, and 1-1 and between that as well. So you never know. I'm going to take a both teams to score here. Mm, little prediction for you. On to the Sunday fixtures, and we turn the page to Burnley versus Villa. Villa were unbelievable against Everton. I watched that game. Diaby looked unreal. Bailey, Watkins had a few chances. The midfield looked solid, man. Matty Cash looked great. Dinya put in so many crosses. They look a real threat. Burnley is a very small sample size. I mean, we've essentially got nothing to go on with Burnley. First, well, promoted into the league for one. They've played one game. The game against Luton was cancelled, and that one game was against Man City in the last 3 0. What more can we say here? The only thing I've got on written downs are both teams to score, and I've written nothing to judge Burnley on, but Villa looked unreal against Everton. Burnley can definitely score at home. Villa have looked suspect, especially against Newcastle. Con to concede five in your first game, I know Mings on there, but five goals is a, a bit heavy. I know Newcastle are a good side, but that was ridiculous. Listen, a Villa win, I think, I think Villa are about evens to win. I might back a Villa win late on. I'm gonna, ooh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, change of plan. A Villa win. No, both teams to score. I'm going to take a both teams to score. Just see how it goes. It's, it's a punt. Burnley haven't played yet. The second to last fixture, very similar to the Arsenal game. Sheffield United versus Man City. I'm going to take a City win by two goals. 
They're battered Burnley, let's be real. Um, United haven't looked very good. Sheffield United lost 2 1 against Nottingham Forest, lost two, lost 1 0 against uh, Palace. Not convincing at all. I think he might be first sacked, I'll be honest, that manager. And again, City just looked decent. The previous head to heads, by the way, City beat them 3 0 in the FA Cup, I believe, semi finals, yeah. So there you go. They beat them 1 0, 1 0, and 1 0 in the previous three head to heads, which isn't convincing. I just think City look unreal. Foden looks so good the other day as well. The centre halves looked. It looks like City won't concede many this year. They'll be coming for that Mourinho 15 goal. Was it 04 05 season? Record. Both. No. Win by two goals or more. Man City. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, leave a like on the video, guys. Leave a like on the goddamn video. Right now, let's get 50 likes on this. Run this thing up, as HS Tiggy Toggy would say. And also subscribe. Subscribe, please. The final game and the biggest game of the weekend is Newcastle versus Liverpool. This game has both teams to score. Written all over it and massive marker pen. Both Liverpool's games this year being both teams to score. And both teams scored in the Villa game. I just think the attack's... For each team looks so good. This game of won and lost in the midfield, I think. Tonali, Bruno, Joe Linton, the power, the, the, you know, the, the, the engine room, the sheer intensity, and also the intelligence in that midfield as well. Tonali looking, looking beautiful in the first two games. Liverpool's attack looks unreal. We can definitely nick a goal on the counter. I don't know how this game's going to go. Only I can see are both teams to score. Here is the overall, I think it's about 40 to 1 this or something, it's about that. And just to recap, we have gone Chelsea to win, Bournemouth both teams to score with Tottenham, Arsenal to win the match by two more goals, under three goals Brentford Palace, I don't know if I like that. Both teams to score Everton Wolves, Man United to beat Forest, both teams to score Burnley versus Villa, Man City to beat Sheffield United by two goals or more, both teams to score in Newcastle Liverpool, and both teams to score in Brighton versus West Ham. Let me know if you agree, leave your predictions down below as well.